everyone. How are you doing? I hope that you're all well. I just felt like I should come on and record to just share some of the visions and messages that I've been receiving on my path and a little bit about what's been going on in my journey. I know that the last time I had recorded a video, I was really sharing that I was feeling a push for everyone on this journey to fully let go. Uh, it was a new state of surrender that I felt I had reached where I really felt neutral. I felt safe in the knowing that I did trust and believe I was a twin flame, who my twin flame is. However, I wasn't going to limit myself anymore and need that particular person in the 3D. I felt I had come to a place where my life was good with or without him. I would be fine either way and I trusted in that and I trusted the universe was taking care of me, taking care of all my needs, only good would come. I was in the flow of manifesting, I was in a flow of abundance and coming into my masculine energy of grounding and creating a good life for myself and my son um, and full of a lot of gratitude for what was good in my life for what was surrounding me the love and you know just support and family and friends and joy and fun and all the positives so I'd really come into a place of healing um, and I did I just felt I was finally finally able to let go to an even higher degree than what I had mentioned in, say, one of my much older videos about getting to surrender. This was a whole new level and a whole new balancing and just a neutral place for me to be where my heart was so open and full of love, but I truly felt my twin was free. He was free to do what suited him and... The analogy that I gave was, it's like I was a chaser, he was a runner, and it's like if there was a little boy and a little girl running around playing tag or chase on on a field or something, and finally I felt like I was that little girl and I was exhausted. I was tired of the chasing, I was tired of the running, even just energetically, and I stopped. I stopped in my tracks and I just let go. So I had posted that video and literally, a, I think a couple days later, it was like my twin felt it energetically and he came and made contact with me, which is a very, very, very rare occurrence in our journey and our, you know, bond that we have. It's usually been me reaching out after a certain amount of time. So... I really was surprised and shocked when I heard from him. Um, he came towards me and he followed me on social media. He wrote me a couple of times. I was a little hesitant still. I had just gotten to this place of such surrender that I just didn't feel drawn to just jump right back in like I used to. And I felt he could feel that. And again, fear kicked in and he unfollowed me. <laughs> and I wrote him very honestly. And I just, you know, I think before I would have been very upset and hurt. And this time I just said, hey, I noticed that you followed me and unfollowed me. And I was just very honest with him about it. Kind of like, what's up with that, you know? And he didn't really say anything back. So, again, I just left it. I left it alone. And then, all of a sudden, maybe a couple weeks later, he contacted me again. And then this time, he called me, and we spoke for the longest that we've spoken ever, I believe. We spoke for almost three hours, and... It's, I don't think I've ever had to let him go, and I let him go, and even still, he kept texting me after that. It was very interesting, <laughs> and the love I could feel, and 
the awakening to the connection I could feel on his end was incredible. Um, and also at the same time, the level of how grounded I was into this was really incredible to me. Before, if he would have called me, first of all, my heart would have sank. I would have had a very nervous energy. And usually we would talk for maybe 10, 15 minutes tops. And it was just almost like too much nervous energy that he would usually say, okay, uh, well, I better go now and, you know, let me go because it was almost just too intense for the two of us and almost an awkward, intense, strange energy that we couldn't ground. And this time when I spoke to him, when he called me, my heart didn't sink. I just felt really calm. I felt very grounded speaking to him. Uh, I felt I could handle it so much better than ever in the past. And also just be in my truth, be myself. I noticed how before maybe I would have, I, I can't describe it, almost put on a different tone even in my voice of sounding even happier than I really was. And this time I could just be so real and so myself and I could feel that the comfort of that between the two of us allowed us to stay in that connection and speak so much longer than ever before, especially over the phone, I should say. So we got off that night and then the communication has continued since. I will say that there's been times that it sort of drops away or I feel, you know, a, a little sever in the connection. And it's interesting, too, that this time I really feel that during those times when it drops or he pulls away, I used to go into panic. I used to go into fear. I've had little tinges of that, but I can quickly go into it in this awakened state that I can realize what is really happening. He's clearing, I'm clearing, we still have residual stuff to clear, which I'll talk a, a little bit more about after, but it has to be this way. We need to take our time and I'm awakened so much more now that I can understand that. So as time is passing, we seem to come in and out of communication and it Reminds me of runner, chaser, <laughs> um, sorry, running and then coming back into communication. How it was in the past, but just very rapid. It's at this point going in and out, in and out, like very quickly. If he runs, it's like for a day or two and then he comes back and it's like he's refreshed. He's cleared a little bit more. He's ready to be a little more honest, to have a little bit more of a deeper conversation and because I'm feeling a lot more grounded into my masculine, but yet balanced in my feminine, I'm feeling I can be very open hearted, very loving, but yet not needy like I used to be when I felt I was too much in my feminine, um, not codependent. It's still giving him a huge level of freedom to do what he will within this connection, but yet easily sharing with him to the depths of my soul, you know, what my truth is, what I envision, what I feel, what I see, and saying it without fear and saying it without demand or expectation, but just sharing with him. And I feel he needs to hear that, at least in our connection. And I feel that he does get a little bit fearful and he pulls away a little bit, but then he comes right back. And I feel a mixed emotion from him energetically. I feel a mixture of him being excited and so thankful that I'm still here, um, so full of love. But then I'm feeling a lot of energy, especially lately, of fear Fear of what this will entail for us to be together. Um, fear of the healing that he still needs to do to get into the right place. Fear of him feeling he's not good enough yet. Or lately especially, I'm feeling a lot of remorse for the ways that he has 
hurt me on the surface and fear that he could do that again. So within these sorts of peaks and valleys, it's really been a great opportunity for me to fully come into clearing and just be open and allow for the clearing of these residual energies, allow for clearing of, you know, what's mirroring what he's feeling is definitely my residual fear of him, of the connection, of being hurt by it, fear of being vulnerable. It definitely feels like now that I'm awakened, I see so clearly and feel so clearly the difference between the heart and the mind, the difference between your soul and your ego. It even sometimes feels like you have a little angel on one shoulder guiding you and the little devil on the other shoulder guiding you. And when you get to such an awakened state, you're able to differentiate the two and clearly see when I do fall into the illusions, into the separation, into the ego traps. And I start feeling that uncomfortable, icky feeling come over me and it's like, uh oh, here we go, here we go. And I feel it and I face it. Don't deny it. Your ego is definitely trying to protect you, which it's understandable. We have to honor that. But it's like easing your ego and saying, it's okay. You're just scared right now. It's okay. There's only love. Another little piece of advice that I would like to share that has really been helping me lately is. I've made a joke with some of my clients that I literally have, especially Archangel Michael, but then other assisting Archangels like Gabrielle. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of who else. Mostly Archangel Michael and Gabrielle, to tell you the truth. Sometimes I call on Jesus Christ and Mary Magdalene for more intense clearings, but I feel like Archangel Michael and Gabrielle currently, it's like they're on my speed dial, I say. <laughs> And that's my joke is like, before I used to feel that in order to do a clearing, I need to go in a deep meditative state and really focus on it and go into a deep energetic healing almost session with myself and clearing. Now it's very quick and it's a constant, you know, just quickly call on them for help whenever you need help or whoever you feel is guiding you in your journey. I've always felt a deep connection to Archangel Michael. Um, and I do. I just quickly call upon him. Archangel Michael, please assist me now. And blah, blah, blah. Just whatever it is I'm currently feeling or whatever I want to clear. Or even just please assist me in my union. And just, you don't even have to say it out loud. But just a quick little request and I'm telling you it feels like quick resets constantly and now things are moving so quickly that I truly feel this can help twin flames. Another aspect that I do feel I'll need to make a whole other video on is the clearing of wounding, inner child pain, um, pain towards your relationship with your parents, your upbringing, clearing out all of that has been so integral in this journey and I feel so important in getting to the energetic space where I'm at today. If I held on to all that anger and resentment and kept those blockages that that pain I felt had caused me to build up, I kept all that there's no way I could be as open-hearted and have found this place of love and compassion and open-heartedness that there's no way I would have had the room to allow my twin flame to come into union with me I feel fully so I've definitely been working on that and Coming into such a place of compassion for both of my parents, there's been a lot of pain involved with both of them. And in reality, what I had to heal with my parents was precisely what I had to heal with my twin flame. 
and the issues of, you know, when he would run, going into the abandonment issues from my dad, leaving and not wanting anything to do with me growing up. And then other aspects of him that remind me of my mother. And then going into a place of feeling compassion, feeling compassion for their anger and addiction, etc. Struggles with that, that I used to always take it so personally. And now I can truly see that that's their own battle from within and if anything I have so much compassion where before I used to have so much judgment for those sorts of issues so coming into a place of forgiveness and love and even gratitude for what I've experienced has really made such a difference in my journey so far and even just recently you know I'm seeing major changes within my parents within the dynamic and I'm seeing how those same blockages and wounds that had held me back from my twin flame union how much they had held me back from having healthy relationships with each of my parents where I could move on from the past and start anew and have an open heart I could again speak my truth to each of them, stand firm in my boundaries with them, love them unconditionally, but again, let them know that I had boundaries or I felt, just however I felt, I could share it with them in a very real, neutral, honest way that again was without expectations of they had to do this for me or that for me or they had to prove their love this way or fix it this way but it really allowed for true healing to take place so so much has happened I'm so thankful for all of it as I always mention um, another thing I've been really pushed to work on with a lot of my clients is bringing in your law of attraction skills, your manifestation skills, it's time to master those skills. And even if you've studied it, keep going at it. You can keep going further and further with it. Now is the time. Now is the time to envision what you want, but yet truly let it go. Hand it over to the universe and trust it. And trust that you will receive what you want or even better and that's the key here and I feel like that's the key in being able to not not have an expectation or be limited to believing it has to be the person that you believe is your twin flame there's a high likelihood it is that person and sure let's be open to that as well but let's be open to that hey, maybe that was a catalyst, maybe that was a false twin, maybe that was to set you in motion to do this healing to meet the one. Again, some clients, they get really uncomfortable when I say that, and I get it, I got uncomfortable when I had to face that as well, very uncomfortable. But when I thought about it, why would we be uncomfortable? And I've told clients this as well, if we are asking to manifest that or better, Imagine if it's even better. Imagine if the connection's even better than what you've experienced so far. So in that way, we can let go. And I felt when I truly let go of the physical being of my twin flame here on the earthly plane, like it has to be him. Where is he? Why isn't he coming for me? And like an obsessive longing. Let it go. Let it go. Manifest the feeling. Manifest the feeling that you had with your twin. The experience of being around your twin. The experience of that exchange. The sexual energy. That connection. That's what we're manifesting. And we know we deserve it. And we're ready for it. And we're open to it. And I will say that although my twin and I are in quite constant contact right now. Every time he pulls away, it's almost like I I have to 
sort of check myself and get back into that energetic space again and again and again. And it's like a constant reset. Like I was telling you, it's moving very quickly. I trust that he's my twin flame. I trust that I am going to end up with him. But even still, I'm open to the possibilities that, okay, universe, you're in charge. You show me. I trust the universe. More than saying I trust he is the one, this is it. I trust that I'm a twin flame. I trust that I'm ready for union because I feel I've healed. I've I've opened my heart. I've healed my wounds. I'm continuing to do so. I feel this readiness. I feel this sense of gratitude and excitement and joy that I know it's coming either way, no matter what. So in that, I don't feel afraid of the person on this earth who it, I believe to be my twin flame. I don't feel afraid of him like I used to. I don't feel nervous. I don't feel like, oh no, what if I rock the boat? Oh no, is he, has he pulled away? Has he stopped speaking to me again? Oh no, like how do I, how should I navigate this? It's no, I let go because he, whoever is my twin flame is going to love me for me, accept me for me, adore me and honor me for who I am. And I'm sorry, but if I tell that person I love them, they shouldn't be afraid of that. So if I tell him that and he pulls out and he's afraid, I stand strong in my place that I'm speaking truth. I am in my heart. My heart is open. And guess what? Every time it, it has been happening that way where, you know, my twin and I will be speaking and he'll share stuff with me and then I'll share back with him and he gets a little like, ooh, like he pulls away. <laughs> and it's okay. He pulls away. He comes right back so far, you know, and I'm not going to have fear. Lately, it is a battle also of fighting that fear of going back to the memories of when I did go into ego before and when my heart felt broken by him or I felt betrayed or let down or abandoned, I do notice it's like a constant clearing, 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 <laughs> getting out of those lower vibrations. I'm human. I'm still working on this just like the rest of us. And if anyone that isn't in union could tell you otherwise, it can't be true because until we get into that union, we have our work to do and it's okay. It's a beautiful thing. It's so perfect. It's all coming together according to plan. The timelines are beautiful. I'm really, like I said, I'm, I'm really feeling so much strength in this energy, so much sh strength even in the collective. I have non-twin flame friends that I feel completely are awakening. They're coming to me. They're seeking counsel and guidance they want to know more and they're curious about what's been going on with me. What have I been studying? What have I been doing this whole time? The world is really awakening. And when we think about coming into mission, just remember that, as I've mentioned before, every little thing you do, every conversation you have, every time you help someone or any time you share information or or this vibration even of love without even any words, with a smile to another soul that could be going through a hard time on this planet. Everything that you've done, all the work you've been doing, it is so precious, it is so beautiful, and the collective is waking up. I can feel it, I can see it. When I spoke to my twin recently, he is speaking about world issues and poverty and so many things that show me he has awakened and it's beautiful. I am so overjoyed by this. It's incredible. And now is the time. Now is the perfect time. It all makes sense with what's going on in the world. I've had to basically shut down my Facebook in order to protect myself from some of the denser energies that are out there. Because it is, it can be a lot to take in. And funny enough, my twin told me that he had done the same. It's a lot, it's a lot to take in right now. And we really need to protect ourselves, protect our energy field. 
honor your body, treat your body as your temple, love yourself, nurture yourself, and look inwards at any time when you do feel that icky, uncomfortable feeling. What can you do to feel nurtured? What can you do to feel good and full of joy and love? There's got to be a way, you know, if there's a will, there's a way. And whether it be what you can study, how you can help others. I mean, I'm sometimes I'm craving even physical touch that uh, even tomorrow I'm going to an aesthetic school and I'm going to have a facial and a pedicure (laughs) at an aesthetic school. You know, it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. There are ways to enjoy the bounty of this earth, to enjoy the abundance of this earth and to savor it and find the joys in this life that we're living with or without physical union with anybody. I got to that point that I decided I'll be fine even if I live the rest of my life by myself on this planet. I know I will be okay because that's when I truly knew I had found union within. I loved myself. I love being around myself. I love being by myself. Everything's fine no matter what. So again, just keep practicing those manifestation skills, keep reviewing the law of attraction, keep putting it out there to the universe, what you want, what you're ready for, what you know you deserve, finding that self-love, finding that wholeness within, and just know that I really, I get so many messages from the other side of just praise and gratitude and joy um, for all the work that all of us have been doing stay away from negativity protect yourself honor your boundaries honor your energetic vibration it is precious and it is a gift to this earth and you are all precious gifts to this earth as is every soul on this planet but we are bringing the light we are bringing the love to this planet And when these unions come together, oh my goodness, I receive visions of, wow, just this explosion of love over the grid points of the earth. And we're all ready in our spot. We are on our ley lines. We're ready to go. This is going to happen and it's going to be so beautiful. And whether you come into physical union or not do not fret there is more in store anyways everything is going to be fine no matter what again your twin flame what you experienced or better the key point or better it's going to be beautiful have faith no matter what don't lose hope have faith manifest have gratitude be grateful for what already is These are just the messages that keep coming through to me so strongly. So I just wanted to share with you all what I've been feeling, um, what I've been going through. And I really hope if I can even just give one person out there a little more faith to keep moving along, keep going. um, And guidance even for future Twin Flames when the next wave comes through to listen to this and To know there is an end in sight, to know there's going to be so many other twin flames now that have been through this that can assist others. We can all help each other and as always, I'm so thankful for all of you. I'm sending you so much love and light and so much good energy for your union to come together. So much energy of healing for you and your twin flame and just wishing all of you the very very best i'm here if any of you need assistance i do sessions and i know through experience i can help you if you need it at any time and i've kept my prices really reasonable to help as many of you that i can so again so much love to all of you thank you so much for listening and many many blessings your way